Applying for medical school is an extremely stressful process. Throughout my undergrad years, I've always been told, oh, you need to have this on your med school app, and oh, you should do this activity because that'll look good on your med school app. But I was always left wondering, what does the application actually look like? So if you're like me and you wanna know what the AMCAS medical school application system looks like, you know, whether you're an undergrad planning on applying in the future, or if you're a graduate student currently working on your application right now, then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Luigi and I'm currently in the middle of my medical school application process. Throughout my four years of undergrad, I've been involved in multiple organizations focused on educating and helping prepare pre-med students for applying to medical school. But right now, just still looking at my medical school app, I still feel overwhelmed just with all of the stuff that I need to put in it. So that's why I made this video for you guys so you guys can avoid having to go through that stress and have a better understanding of the process itself. So let's get right into it. In this video, I'll be breaking down for you guys the whole AMCAS application system and how each part works. So without further ado, let's get on with our first part, the identifying information. This section serves as AMCAS's way to identify you. You're going to be listing your legal name, your preferred name, any alternate names, your ID numbers, and as well as your um, date of birth and your gender. So there's one part that I want to highlight here and that's the ID numbers section. In that section, you have to list out all of the ID numbers that you've received if you've attended multiple colleges. So for example, for me, I attended three different colleges because of like summer schools and I have to list the ID numbers that I've received for those two. The next section is the schools attended section. So in this section, they give you the opportunity to list out your high school and all of the colleges that you've attended, whether you're a transfer student, you took summer classes, or if you took any master's program and any graduate degrees at other colleges too, this is where you can list them out. Right under that section is the transcript section. And this is basically where AMCAS gives you transcript request forms that you can print out and send to the corresponding colleges so that they can submit the transcript request form along with your transcript. This is really important because the transcript request form contains your AAMC ID and your AMCAS transcript ID, which makes it easier for AMCAS to associate the transcripts that they receive with your account. The previous matriculation section asks if you've attended a medical school before. And lastly, there's the institutional action section. So this is where you have to list down any institutional action that's been taken against you throughout your college career. The third portion is the biographic information portion, and it's pretty self-explanatory and easy to fill out. But there are some key parts that I should highlight. The first is the self-identification um, section. And this is basically where you can list out your ethnicity or you can choose to not list it out. The next part is languages, and this is where you can list out any languages that you can speak at different proficiencies, and they ask you to clarify whether you speak it at home or how fluent you are at that language. The last two important sections for this part of the application is the childhood information and the disadvantaged status section. So these two sections kind of go hand in hand, where the first part, the childhood information section, is going to be asking you where you grew up, whether you feel that place that you grew up in is medically underserved, and it also asks for your family income. So the late latter portion, which is the disadvantaged status portion, is kind of more complicated. This is where you can list yourself as a disadvantaged applicant, and if you click yes, then the AMCAS app will basically give you 1,325 words to explain why. So there's also a little pop-up that I'll post right after this where you guys can see like how you can consider yourself as disadvantaged and what AMCAS considers as disadvantaged. So these are the factors that you can list out in that space that they give you to write about. Next, we have the coursework section, and this section is probably one of the most tedious parts of the whole application. This is where you're gonna be transferring your transcript and inputting it into the AMCAS application system. So if you guys have watched my previous video before, I gave a tip about how you should print out your actual transcript and actually highlight and mark each class that you've taken as you input it into the application system to make it easier for you to organize what you've input in and if you've inputted it correctly. So you'll be inputting basic information about each course that you've taken, such as the course name, when you took the course, and what year you were in college when you took the course. But at the same time, there's also more complicated information to put in, such as what kind of course it is. Fortunately, AMCAS provided a lot of tutorials to basically help you with this section. One of the most important parts is basically determining whether a course counts as a science or a non-science course. And to do that, you know, you just have to follow along with the tutorials. 
For some classes, there might not be as good of a clarification about whether it belongs in the science or non-science section, but in the end, AMCAS will be the ones that decide whether it should be counted as science or non-science. You also have the opportunity afterwards to dispute any changes that AMCAS might make. For example, if you believe a class should be in the science section, but AMCAS listed it as non-science, then you can file a dispute and you guys can try to work it out to see where it really belongs. At the same time, this could end up prolonging your application process, which could negatively affect you in the long run. So you basically have to weigh the pros and cons between how important it is that that course be listed as a science or non-science course and how late you'll be able to apply in the application process. So, you know, like in the end, you're the one that gets to decide whether you want to file that dispute or not. So it's important to take those factors into account. So in the bottom, you also get to list out any courses that you might have taken as pass fail or any courses that you've edited. And yeah, that's it for this section. Next is the work slash activity section of the medical school app. So this section is one of the more important parts because this is where you get to list out any extracurricular activities that you've taken part in throughout your college career. In this section, you have 15 slots or 15 entries where you could put in any activities that you feel is important to mention to medical schools. So for each activity or each entry that you put in, you have to list out the name of the activity, what you classify it as, any contact information for any supervisors that you may have had during those activities, and lastly and more importantly, basically the description that you have for each activity. For the description section of each entry, you get 700 characters to type up whatever you feel is the best way to portray your experience but that you also have the option of selecting three of your activities as most meaningful activities. And with these sections, AMCAS gives you 1,325 extra characters to further describe that experience and why you feel that that better makes you capable of becoming a medical student. So because of that strict character count, you know, it's really important to be smart with your words. And what I recommend doing is to basically pre-write it in a Word document and send it out to as much people as you can or maybe not a lot of people, but to some people that you trust so that they can edit it for you and give their honest opinion about your writing. Some people might see things differently than you and that's what's probably going to happen with the admissions committees too. So it's important to take other people's into account and to see if they actually understand your experience and whether they see the value in it and how it'll make you a good applicant for medical school. The next section is the letters of evaluation section. and. Fortunately for me and as well as the rest of you guys, AMCAS gives a lot of tutorials as to how to submit this. So there's two ways that you can submit your letters of evaluations or letters of recommendations. First is through the AMCAS application system itself and they have a tutorial for that. And the other way is through Interfolio, which is basically a third party um, system that allows you to submit letters to AMCAS too. So either way, both of them work and both of the instructions are there on the AMCAS website. So with regards to this section, it's really important to basically do your research on each of the medical schools that you're applying to and know what letters of evaluations they're looking for. Some schools have strict requirements where they require you to send at least three letters of recommendations in. Some schools are more lenient and allow any number of letters. But at the same time, most schools require at least one from a science professor, one from a non-science professor, and one from your extracurricular activities. So it's important to have at least those three. So the next section is the medical school section and I think this is one of the more fun parts of this whole application because this is where you get to pick and choose which medical schools you're going to be applying to. So to help you with this selection, there's basically filters up top where you can basically choose schools by location and also by program types. Program types just means that what kind of programs they have in that medical school, whether it's just MD programs or if they have dual degree programs too. So for example, if you want to do an MD PhD program, there's a filter for that and it will give you a list of all the schools that have that program. So you can pick and choose between those schools which ones you're planning to apply to. Once you select the medical school, a pop-up is going to appear and it's going to be asking you more questions such as what program you want to apply for and if you want to attach any letters of recommendations. One important thing to remember is that letter of recommendations aren't necessarily due when your primaries are being sent out. So letters of recommendations are due as your secondaries are being submitted. So you can take your time and submit letter of recommendations once it's all ready to go. So one tip that I have for this section is to basically purchase the MSAR, which stands for the Medical School Admissions Requirement, early on before you even start the application. So for $28, you get a yearly subscription and through that MSAR, you basically get all of the information that you might need for a medical school, including 
the amount of um, people that they accept in an incoming class, tuition fees, um, location, average MCAT and average GPAs of the people that they accept, and also they have links to the school's official website too. So it's a really helpful tool that I recommend every single pre-med student that's planning on applying to purchase. The next section is the essay section, and this is basically where you input your personal statement. You get 5,300 characters to answer the question, why do you want to become a physician? I have a lot of tips and strategies for that section, so make sure you guys tune into my channel and, you know, hit that subscribe button too. So moving along to the last part of the med school app, you have the standardized test section. And this is basically automatic. Um, when you signed up to basically apply for medical school, you're using the same account that you used to sign up for your MCAT. And that's why it's already connected. Your MCAT score is automatically going to appear in this section already. But there's also portions in the bottom where you can put in any other scores that you might have taken that's not the MCAT, such as any GRE or GMAT test scores that you might have. Well, that's basically it for the whole med school app. But yeah, there's some general tips that I'd like to point out before we conclude this video. So first, medical schools accept people on a rolling basis, which means like, imagine it as an empty classroom with 30 seats. So the students that come in earlier are more likely to get a seat. But as time goes on and more seats get filled up, if you submit your application late, if you enter the classroom late, then there's only three seats available and you're fighting over it with 100 other students. So it's better to submit your app earlier than later because that just allows you to be looked at by medical schools earlier and for them to have a more open mind as to what kind of students they'll take, which increases your chances of getting accepted. If you guys thought that this video was very educational, then make sure to hit that like button. And I'm also here to help you guys. So if you have any questions, make sure to write it down in the comments down below. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to know more tips and tricks or any strategies to getting accepted into medical school or want to follow me along on my journey to become a physician, then make sure to hit that subscribe button too. The fact that you guys are taking the time out of your day to watch this video to prepare for applying to medical school already shows that you're putting in that work. And you know my motto, if you put in the work, then the results are sure to follow. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.